So, yeah, Scott, this week, our topic that we're going to chat about is, is cause substitutions. And, and the thing that sort of sparks this off is that there's been a conversation with Sean. Well, it was Sean in the campus, wasn't it? Yeah, he's been asking about why they work and the effect that they can have and, you know, hearing some cause substitutions. He was asking how to get into it, wasn't he? Yeah, it, exactly. Well, yeah. So we thought maybe we'd discuss some common substitutions that we use and then how you can apply them to uh, your playing. So... Uh, yeah, why don't you just give us a sort of basic overview of what chord substitutions are? And, yeah, uh, absolutely. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So a chord substitution in its basic sense is, you know, somebody plays a chord or you see a written chord. Yes. Okay, so let's say, if in, for, for instance, a C major, yeah. you know, you look at that, you know, the lead sheet or whatever you're reading and it's a C major seven chord. And mm. automatically as a bass player, you think, I play C. Mm. Okay, or you can play the arpeggio C, mm. or you can play the C major scale. Okay, when you see that C major, C major chord. Now, a chord substitution is something you can play in place of that chord, and it will work with it. So in okay. terms of your bass line, someone's playing a chord on the piano, so if they're playing C major, you can play another. C major. You can play um, an, an, an alternative to the root, and then you can expand on that and play and you can expand a full on chord as well. Yeah, so for instance, on the C major, and we're going to get into this just to see, like, so you can see how it actually works in practice. On a C major, okay, I could play a minor mm. from the third. Yeah. Okay, so a C major. But I could also... E minor. Play an E minor as well over that, and it's going to give us a, a different, you know, a different set of notes. It's the third, it's the fifth, it's the major seven, and then it's the nine. Yeah. It's going to give you. So, to be really specific with people, these first group of substitutions that we're talking about, the notes that are included in C major are the same as in an E minor, but we've replaced the root note C with the note D. That's it. So, there's a, with e, a ninth e. in. The, Sorry, we, no, no, it's, it's D. E minor, isn't so, it? So, yeah, if we're in E minor, so if we play an E minor um, arpeggio over yeah. C major, the E is the third of C major, so yeah. that's, that's the same. Uh, the G, which is the third of E minor, is, is also from the arpeggio. The yeah. only note that's changed, the B is the seventh um, in C major. Uh, the one that's changed is that C has been replaced with D. Yeah. That's it's the only one that's different. So it's, it's exactly the same notes, except you lose the root note and you replace it with a nine. And what that gives you is it means that you're playing, it's less sort of, well, it's less grounded. You know, you don't have the root making it sound very bassy. Yeah. You're playing all of the kind of the cooler notes, if you like, yeah. that people would use to improvise with. Um, and the great thing is that when, yeah, these, these first ones that we're going to show you, uh, you, they use the same notes uh, but just starting in a different way, except that the root is replaced with the ninth. Yeah, so. and I think, well, I think something as well that, because people always talk about, like as we're doing, mm. what notes are different, what's yeah. added when you play a substitution, what do you get that's different, okay? Yeah. And for somebody that's watching this, they might think, well, E minor, it, it's just like a, mm. it's a C major arpeggio, but with a, it's with a nine. Different. So why? So the the question mm. is, which which is completely valid. Well, why think to yourself, oh, well, I'm going to play E minor yeah, instead yeah. of C major because essentially it's the same notes. Yeah. And the, the the answer to that is that you will have different vocabulary that you'll use. Over, if you think about a major chord, you know, if I think about a major chord, somebody plays C major, I, I could think. No, mm. and that's like a major bit of vocabulary that I've learned, okay? I've got different vocab mm. over minor chords, mm. okay? So what I'm doing is, even though it's the same mm. notes, mm. it is within the C major, but I'm just, it's a... Yeah, you're, the way that you're viewing it, so you create new language. New language the, over that major The other chord. thing that I think is really key is that, you know, you can't get away from the fact that we're talking about chords with a root. So we're saying E minor, we're saying yeah. C major, and, you were, and by replacing, 
By using the E minor version, the root note that you're starting with, your starting note, isn't a root. And you want to get away from these bass solos that sound like everything starts on the root. On the root, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, yeah, somebody says, yeah, it's one of those bass player things. Because we play roots all the time, we're yeah. so used to playing it. When you see a C major, all of your lines will start yeah. in a C. Exactly. But by, by starting on the E, by playing E minor, all of your lines of start on the third, so you're starting on a harmony note. And the two really important notes in any chord that you need are, well, there's, th I mean, there's the root note, of course, which gives you, you know, the, the foundation of the chord. Yeah. The third tells you whether it's major or minor. And then the seventh tells you whether it's basically whether it's got any movement within the chord because it might be a dominant chord or yeah. it'll have a major seventh. So, you know, so if it was in the context of a minor one, it would just be the minor seventh. But the, the root's super important. The third tells you whether it's major or minor. And the seventh in the right context will tell you whether there's a chord that wants to move and resolve whether to it's going to resolve to something. exactly yeah, yeah. so now, you know, another really interesting one just like that major one and mm. what i'm giving you now guys is just what like a couple of easy substitutions then i'm going to mm. tell you how to actually practice this stuff because i've got it, it's different you should actually practice this different, yeah. differently there's a step that you should take before this so on a major chord you can think you know a minor built from the third mm. of the chord so C major, the third is the E. One, two, three. Build a minor chord from that. Okay, that's an easy substitution. So if it was an F major, okay, an F major chord, you'd play an A. You could play an A minor, and it's gonna it's gonna work perfectly over that. Okay, so that was the major. Uh, the minor is exactly the same, okay? So you, if it's a D minor, you build an arpeggio from the, the third. The minor third of D minor is F, but instead of what we did before, we used, it was a major chord and we substituted it for a minor chord, it's the opposite for a minor. Can I make it like a, a sort of point about how you, to remember this stuff, is that you're playing the third of a chord, so if the, ba the chord that we're starting with is D minor, you're yeah. going to play the third, and you're going to play the opposite to, to the mate, whether it's major or minor. The opposite, opposite tonality. of whatever. Is that you're, right? Yeah. Your you're, chord type. You're playing the opposite of the chord so type. So if you play C, if you've got C major, you play the third, and you play a minor sound. Which is chord, the opposite of a major. Which is exactly. And if you play E minor, e minor. you play G major. G major. So it starts on the third, the chord starts on the third, and it's the opposite chord type to the, to the chord that you're basing it on. And I always think, if I'm thinking about solo, D minor, like F major is such a is so built into my playing. Yes, yeah, so if it was D you know, minor, the minor third is F. Yeah. We want to substitute the minor chord, so we're going to use a major chord, so we'd use F major. Yeah. And it automatically made you highlight the ninth there. Yeah. That in the way that you you know, and you used a, the most basic sort of fingering pattern for a major, yeah, and you just three, went up there, third, but the three, notes sounded cooler five, because seven. you weren't highlighting the D, which is the root, which is a much more boring yeah, you're note missing in terms that, of soloing. That. Yeah. It's a really cool way of doing it. So how about the dominant okay. seventh chord then, Scott? That was the next one that we... Well, the dominant did. seventh chord, a really cool one, is just to think up a semitone from the root. Oh, no, there's a load of cool ones here, yeah. Okay. Could, could, we, could we maybe one. get to that one second? Because I think what we could do is we could do the... the well, the I know third, I was going to on the third. Oh, well, first. Yeah, you can base it on the third. To keep it the same as the other ones. With this one, when you base it on the third, it's got to be diminished. It's diminished, yeah. So on yeah. the major chord, you build a minor chord from the third. Yeah. On the minor chord, you build a major chord from the third. Yeah. I say major chord, I mean a major seven arpeggio. Let's yeah. just re rewind that. So on the major chord, a major seven arpeggio, you build a, you build a minor seven arpeggio from the yeah. third. On a minor chord, you build a major seven from the third, from the yeah. minor third. And on a dominant chord, you build a diminished chord yeah. from the third, or and that, diminished And that gives you G7 flat nine. That'll give you a flat nine. If you use minor seven flat five there, it would give you a nine, but we don't want to get too into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's, let's give them with what, obviously I could talk about this. I was saying to Jeff that I'm going to do a live seminar on this. It's such a big topic, isn't it? But that one for me is like such, you hear players, you do this kind of. Yeah, so if it was a simple two, five, one, Okay, so when it hits that G dominant seven, I'm 
building a diminished arpeggio from the third, which is, if you don't know what a diminished arpeggio is, it's just a bunch of minor thirds. Root, uh, well, third, minor third, minor third, minor third, yeah. minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third. So third, just keeps repeating. Third, minor third just repeats and repeats. So you can get this. And then you resolve. And then it resolves. Yeah. From the D minor. So if we look at um, um if we look at uh, two five one mm. on the D minor F yeah. major, I'm using an F major. On the G seven just a B diminished arpeggio and on the C major yeah. E minor and hear how melodic that sounds and you already if you're getting started with soloing and you already know the basics I mean I'm sure you know these minor seven arpeggios I bet you played them a million times yeah but, but your solos are sounding boring because they're all built from the root this the, this option is, you know, will it gives you two options. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. On every on every chord, like there's a there's bunch a of different stuff you can do, right? You, it, but it, this gives you two different places that you can start. On a on a C major seven, you could play a C major. Yeah. Or you could play an E minor. On the Jacko video that he did, the instructional video, there's a bit where he's talking about G7, and it's in fact they're talking about the chicken, and he's trying to describe the chord G7, and he can't bring it to mind. He means G7 flat nine, yeah, and he says B diminished. Oh, he's, does like, he? he's like, oh, you know, like a B diminished sound. Um, I'm sure it's something people will correct me here to specifically what he said. But the point is, is he gets the two things confused because they're interchangeable. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and he doesn't care about the, the label or whatever. Yeah, but, he's, but he's, he wants the sound, for us, doesn't for he? For us mo mere mortals, reverse engineering what a, G, a G7 flat nine chord is and, and using this instead, it's so effective. Now, Scott, you also touched on these... Uh, melodic minor substitution. Do you think that's too far for us to go in this, or do you want yeah. to? I think <laughs> on the is, dominant But one. maybe maybe we could cover that in another time because yeah, I think otherwise yeah. it's gonna it's you know that's it's such a great probably topic. a course in itself actually. Yeah. Well, it already is covered in the um, uh, chord layering. What do you call it? Chord again? layering. Uh, harmonic layering course. Harmonic layering course where I take you to. Yeah. If yeah. you're an academy member, check out the um, the <coughs> harmonic layering course because it's all in there. And one thing I would say hmm. is before you rock it off into using these uh, chord substitutions. I like to think of um, root note substitutions as well. Mm. I think, you know, it's it's easily to for, forgotten about that you can actually just substitute the root note mm. and get a really great, um, a really great sound. And it's really great practice as well. So if we take a simple one, six, two, five in C major, mm. C major, going to the six chord, mm. but let's give it that, you know, the, the common mm. substitution. So let's make that six chord yeah. a dominant. This is really, really uh, common. So a C major moving to a dominant six chord, yeah. but let's treat that as a flat nine. Yeah. And then the two, which is the D minor, moving to a G7, okay, which is the five. So one to six dominant yeah. to two to five. Yeah. If you were just playing root to root, you could play. just basically moving from root to root to root to root and I'm using arpeggio notes okay but essentially it's really simple I'm just using chord tones and, and, and targeting the roots root to root to root to root on the first beat of every mm. bar okay now a really great substitution which isn't a chord substitution I always think about it as just a root note substitution, is getting rid of the root note on beat one and replacing it with a third of the chord, okay? So on the C major, you're going to play an E 
Ooh. as the root note, as the new root note. Well, it's not a new root note. You're going to play the E as a substitution for that root note. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first two chords there. C major. I'm actually starting the line on, on the third. And then I'm moving to the third of the next chord, the A7, sixth mm. dominant. Again, on that D minor, I'm hitting the minor third on beat one. Yeah. And when it yeah. goes to the G7, I'm hitting again the third on beat one. It's a really great practice tool. Mm. Go, just take a real simple groove like this, where it's one, six, two, five. And instead of playing the roots, root, okay, try and get the thirds on the start of each chord, okay, of each bar. It sounds like this. And Scott, just to give people a place to go to get more information on that process, because we realise we're covering, you know, like a huge amount of ground with this. Like each one of these ideas, you know, swapping the minor for the major, starting on the third, you can take that away and study it for months. But Scott covers a lot of this in the Essential Baseline Guide in terms of the basics that you did at the end. Yeah, and, yeah. And for the rest of it, uh, so with starting just, on the third yeah. and changing up the root notes, and for the rest of it, go and check out the Harmonic Layering course, which is in the Yeah, in if the you academy. want a taster just to get you going, go yeah. to scottsbasislessons.com forward slash toolkit. And uh, in there, you'll find a ton of stuff, Bass Buyer's Guide, the modes revealed, yeah. um, and the, the Baseline Creation Guide. Okay, so scottsbasslessons.com forward slash toolkit for that. And, and then if you're an Academy member over at Scott's Bass Lessons, yeah. make sure that you check out the harmonic layering course because it's, uh, it's 10 hours of this stuff. Okay, yeah. taking you through. Because obviously you can, uh, we've talked about simple chord substitutions and, and root note displacing, you know, or, you know, using a third on top of the... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. When would you choose to do it? You wouldn't do it all the way through a song, so when would you in a choose to situation. do it? This is Gav, by the way. Sorry. Um, who's, here's a video for you. You wouldn't do, like do it all the way through a song, would yeah. you? You'd, or would you? Uh, yeah, you could. You, you, well, you wouldn't... You wouldn't, you wouldn't go it all the way through a song, but as, as, a, as a practice tool, you would. So over, over a sequence like that... You know, you could just take that and go round and round it until the cows come home. And then when you're actually in a, a gigging situation, um, um, it just gives you more... It, it gives you more options. Exactly, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it, it gives you more places to develop. So you might like, for instance, when you're doing the chord one to chord six, like Scott was doing there, where you've got C as the root note of the first chord, yeah. you might, rather than moving all the way down a minor third to A, you might like the idea of rising up to that C sharp, which then bridges up straight to the next chord, which is D. So you fill the gap between the two letters. It gives you letters, more options, And you're moving it? at the smallest amount of distance rather than quite large intervals around the bass. Yeah. And, it's, and I'm, we definitely wouldn't say you do it all the time, but it's, yeah, it's one of those things like that you I do, I do it all the time, but I'm, I, in, a, in a working situation, I'm not going to think to myself, I'm going to go from third to Ooh. third to third to third. Yeah, but you I built that language. I want that language available, it. and to get that language available, I'm going to use an exercise like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, for instance, on my girl... Um, 
So it's chord, chord one, it's chord four, it's chord one, mm. it's chord four. Mm. Like you could use it over there, over that really easy. And I'd use it subliminally without even realising it because mm. it's in my language because I've used you know exercises like that. So mm. I could do <coughs> um, chord one. going from chord one to the third mm. of the F to, to the third of the E to the root mm. of the you know it just gives you loads loads of different you know options when you're playing and when you see somebody so when you see somebody using this when you see a bass player using that mm. it's like for me it's like a signal with uh, he knows what he's doing mm. you know when you can actually mm. use it freely you know, because you need to put a certain amount of work in to yeah. actually have this available to you. Because you want to be able to access all the information, the chord, as like if you're a piano player or a keyboard, you know, guitar player, or whatever. When you play those four notes at the same time, you want to know exactly what those notes are, so you can then interpret them in different ways, rather than everything being root based. And that's the problem with with bass solos a lot of the time is they're just so boring because you know a lot of when you start out, you're just so used to playing roots all the time that everything sounds really dull and it doesn't have this freedom that other instruments have, I think. Yeah. So, but and it takes a long time because you start by knowing that C major is built from a C. Yeah. And then after a while, it's like all of the note, key notes from the arpeggio are just yeah. there for you to access. And I think what's key as well is that this, especially the root, st the root note stuff that we've been talking about, yeah. that can be used in bass lines. Well, yeah, this yeah. isn't soloing. You know, I think a lot of yeah, people think like chord substitutions are automatically um, put together with soloing. And it's actually not the truth. You know, you can yeah. do a lot of this stuff within your bass lines and there's well. and like yeah i mean all that sort of the classic motown stuff you know a lot of reggae music you know um there's loads of examples of players that aren't starting the bass lines on the root note yeah but, all, but i tell you what they are doing is they've all got a really solid understanding of the harmony available to them which is but it's just put together in a really cool way like the bass line from i shot the sheriff which starts on the minor third um and it just is this really cool kind of like bass line that, that's put together and, and if it was all root note it could have just played root notes all the way through yeah, but you yeah. know just that little bit of tension that's added in it makes it sound really yeah. really compelling to listen to and I, I mean the other example is when uh, you make the root note the same and the chords are changing over the top which higher and higher is the big example yeah, of that yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know you've got you could have so you're, you're playing chord one all the way through then they're playing chord two and then chord four and five whatever it is yeah um even even walking on sunshine is the same. The chords, is it? Yeah, yeah. You're playing that. You're playing that. The fourth in the root. Right, right. It's not what everybody plays. Everybody always plays. Um, well, you often I'm get walking on sunshine. Well, I'm walking on sunshine. Well, right. Everybody always yeah. plays the roots. Right. Yeah, yeah. The bass actually plays the fourth of the chords. Really? Yeah. It's really? really weird. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. Yeah. But there's lots of examples where people get this mixed up as well because you can interchange chords. Like you could, chord two and chord four can be switched around. So you know in um, Moon yeah. Dance where it goes da na na da na na and it's like chord four and chord five. A lot of people play the four as chord two. Yeah, they Because they think two, it's a two yeah. five. Yeah. And it works harmonically, but yeah. I don't think, in, I mean, don't quote me on that. I haven't heard it for a while, but I'm pretty sure that's not what's being played. And But that's the fun of music that you can mess around with all this stuff and create new ways of looking through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello 